The title, The New Mrs. Ewing, could refer to Ray's fiancée Donna Culver, or it could refer to any of the three Ewing women who are struggling with new identities in their own relationships. I am to copper. Oh yeah, this is that episode. Uh -huh. We join JR in mid-rant as he rails against Ray receiving a share of Jock's trust. So Ellen doesn't really care about any of it anymore. News of the trust decision is also a bone of contention between Jock and Miss Ellie. Ellie is mostly upset that Jock didn't bother talking it over with her before he changed the trust. And now she doesn't have time to talk because she has to stop Takapa. Speaking of contentious, Ray and Donna are having breakfast and Takapa is coming between them too. Both of them know that Jock is behind the Takapa deal and is hiding it from Ellie, but neither of them think it's their place to say anything. Ray is more excited than Donna would like to become involved in the deal, which is kinda sweet. Ray obviously has more than enough money, but this is his chance to have Jock bring him in on something as a real honest-to-goodness Ewing. Donna is worried that he's changing too much. She fell in love with a simple cowboy, after all. Oh, don't worry, Donna. He'll remind you of that. A lot. Ray, the land was always important to you. Ray suggests that they set boundaries. They can fight it out in the boardroom, but no business talk in the bedroom. It's a really good rule, actually. Over at the modeling agency, Lucy is woefully unprepared. But Alex Ward is making the decision and Pam is there, so... It looks like nepotism will rule the day. This is something that Alex openly admits to Pam, but Pam doesn't want to owe him any favors. Yeah, I don't blame her. Every single thing that Alex Ward has done in this arc has made me want to scrub with a Brillo pad. No longer the creepiest guy on the show, Dr. LB continues to cancel through Ellen. She is devastated by the emotional roller coaster she was on when she learned that Dusty Farlow was still alive but then walked away from him. Dr. LB says that she's actually showing progress here because she made the decision to respect Dusty's wishes on her own. It wasn't the result of some man telling her what to do. Well, except Dusty, I guess. I'm going to gush a little more about Linda Gray here because it's such a great performance. She pleads with him to tell her what to do now that Dusty is out of her life and JR is back to his old ways, and he tells her she can make the decision herself. Go back to JR, build a new life with Clint, or strike out on her own. And it's that last one that elicits a thousand yard stare from Gray as Sue Ellen can't even fathom staring into that abyss. I don't know. But I'll try. At Ewing Oil, JR and Leslie look on as Bobby coasts to victory in his Senate race. JR is already scheming on how to triangulate Bobby against Jock and Ellie, thinking that he'll have to take a side on the Decapa deal when it comes before the legislature, and he's bound to piss off one or both of them. The rap buggery is interrupted by Jordan Lee, who offers a can't-miss sweetheart of a deal to JR as a thank you for getting the Southeast Asian oil wells back. Leslie, who you might recall has been recording all of her meetings with JR, asks if she can sit in on the meeting. When she gets home, her ex-boyfriend warns her that JR will dump her soon, and she'll come crawling back. This gives her a chance to do one of those brief asides to the camera when she's alone in the room. He just has to be reminded how much. TV shows need to bring that back. I miss unhinged soliloquies. <laughs> He's been all nasty. What is that? What? That thing that you're doing. It's like you disappear. Team Takapa thinks that Bobby's win means that the Takapa deal will slide right through now. Unfortunately for them, Donna and Miss Ellie also think that they know which way Bobby will decide. And Bobby does look to be pretty powerful in Austin because his victory party for a state senate seat looks like the 1968 Democratic Convention instead of a slightly raucous cocktail hour as it is in most state-level campaigns. Oddly, it's Cliff Barnes of all people who makes the most consequential decision of the episode. And that's his choice of bar to drown his sorrows as he watches the results come in. But that won't pay off for a while. The next morning, JR's new business deal is overshadowed by jaw keeping praise on Senator Bobby. That's okay, though, because Leslie winds up querying the deal anyway. Jordan and Mary Lee pitch the idea of doing some coal strip mining in southern Utah, 
but Leslie thinks it's bad publicity. Jordan and Mary Lee are so offended that they storm out, and JR warns Leslie never to interfere with business again. Back at Dallas Creep Magazine, Alex Ward offers Lucy the title of Miss Young Dallas and an advance check for $1,000. Lucy's eyes bug out, presumably because she's never seen such a small amount of money before. At the Senate offices, Cliff tells Bobby that he's too naive to be a good senator, a point to which Bobby agrees and asks Cliff to be his mentor. Cliff agrees, but only to stick it to JR. At lunch, Clint tells Sue Ellen that they have to figure out their relationship because he can't just continue cheating on his wife. He does have time for a nooner, though. When Jock finds out that JR let Leslie ruin a deal, he goes through the roof and calls JR on the carpet. Miss Ellie walks in just in time to hear Jock at his most misogynistic and tears right into him. JR, you and your daddy use people up and then throw them away. Even members of your own family. You both sicken me. At Cooperstown, Lucy springs onto Mitch and shows him the check. I earned it. <coughs> Mitch doesn't have the reaction that she was hoping for. Turns out that while she was making a modeling deal with Dallas Life Magazine to earn money for the maid, Mitch accepted a contract hit on the maid's life in order to earn enough money to buy Dallas Life Magazine. But they both decided it was a Merry Christmas anyway. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you if you don't get that one. Read a book. Actually, Mitch's reaction owes more to the fact that he's been working doubles to bring home enough money to pay for a maid, and he only brought home $60. Mitch muses that everything comes so easy to the Ewings, and everything that Lucy touches seems to turn to gold, which is actually the opposite of what Miss Ellie said earlier. Everything you touch, you spoil. JR catches Sue Ellen with John Ross, and tells her to be careful that she doesn't get knocked up by another random guy because he'll be so distraught. The Krebses are married at the county courthouse with very little pomp and circumstance. In the celebration, Lucy lets slip that Pam got her the job as Miss Young Dallas. Hothead Bobby storms into Alex Ward's office and threatens him to stay away. But Alex rightly says that Pam wouldn't have given him a second look if there weren't problems in Bobby's marriage. So maybe he should take care of that. In maybe the most Bobby Ewing moment ever, after 10 consecutive episodes of Pamela begging Bobby to listen to her, when she says that she's unhappy in their marriage, Bobby comes to the realization that his wife is unhappy in their marriage. When another man tells him. Bobby returns home and asks Pam if there's anything wrong in their marriage. But they are interrupted by Chalk calling them down for the marriage toast. Miss Ellie offers the happy couple the gift that keeps on giving. The DOA has stopped the Takapa project. An incensed Jock reveals that he has been behind the Takapa project the whole time, in another great Jim Davis line. I am Takapa. This leads to one of the great episode cappers of the series as Sue Ellen, who is well beyond her capacity to give a shit about the Ewings, welcomes Donna to the family. Welcome to the Ewing family. And we're out. The new Mrs. Ewing has a lot to like about it, particularly its pacing. Every scene feels like it has a purpose here and that we're not just on a carousel. Part of that is that we're approaching the end of the season, and it's time to ramp up the storylines. But the other part is the dullness of the mid-season slump is over. This is our second big wedding, and thankfully it wasn't treated like a big wedding episode. You can only take so many people being shoved into the pool, you know? What I like most about the tension here is that almost everything is a proxy battle. Yes, Ellie cares about the environment, but stopping the Takapa deal is asserting her independence. And yes, Jock wants to make money, but... He's out to prove that he's still relevant in the business world, and it's one last hurrah with his friend Punk. Ray is excited to be a part of the project, but he's more excited to be like his daddy and leave behind the stink of Amos Krebs legacy. Yes, Alex wants a top model, but he's really hiring Lucy to get to Pam. Yes, Pam wants to help Lucy, but honestly, she's probably just doing it to smack some sense into Bobby. As Miss Ellie says, the Ewings all use people as pawns in their little games. And this episode is proof of concept. But up next, Bobby has to answer the same question Robert Redford did in The Candidate. Marvin, what do we do now? 